Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Lines in Sand. If you've been following developments in Egypt in any way for the last few weeks, you'll know that the Scan Pyramid's North Face Corridor, one of the voids discovered by muon scans and backed up with ground-penetrating radar amongst other things, was finally seen for the first time on camera when a 6mm endoscopic camera was slid into the cavity, hidden just 80 centimeters behind the enormous chevrons at the edge of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Pretty much any YouTuber with an interest in Egypt released a video about the discovery, as did I, cobbling together a video excitedly in the hours after hearing of the breaking news. However, now that there has been time for the dust to settle on this startling new discovery, I figured the time was right to go through some more of my thoughts about this discovery and what it could mean going forward. I just want to take Take the time right now before we get stuck into the main part of the video to thank everyone who got in touch over the new corridor. We've had some fantastic discussions and seeing everyone's thoughts and reactions was genuinely exciting. Yes, even those of you who thought the corridor is all just a fuss about nothing, thank you for reaching out. One of the best things about starting this channel has been talking to people from all walks of life, from all over the world about the pyramids. So please consider liking this video or even subscribing to to the channel if this is the kind of content that you enjoy. Grab yourself a drink and let's take another look at this corridor. The story so far. I won't spend hours rehashing everything that has happened leading up to this point, but I will just touch on the main points in the story so far. The chevrons above the entrance to the descending passageway of the Great Pyramid of Egypt have puzzled researchers for centuries. The feature seems unique to the Great Pyramid, and we know that further chevrons have probably existed in this space and have either been removed or have fallen away. As to the function of the chevrons and the tunnel that we now know lies behind them, well, this is still indeed a mystery, one of many that continues to perplex those who are deeply interested in the Great Pyramid of Khufu. The area continued to attract researchers not only due to its unique appearance, but due to the fact that it must have served some sort of function for the people who built the pyramid. Of course, why else would they have taken the time and effort to build it this way. There must have been a reason. Two popular theories have survived over time, I'm sure there are more, but for the purposes of this brief recap, one contains the prospect that the masonry formed some part of a great swinging door that hid the original entrance to the pyramid. The other popular theory prophesied that a tunnel would be discovered behind the chevrons. Popularizing this theory in more recent times, particularly in the early years of the new millennium, was the exciting work of Jean-Pierre Houdin, and then, in 2016, the Scan Pyramids project announced that they had discovered a void behind the chevron blocks using muon scanning. Then, depending on who you asked, in what was either an amazing turn of events or a well, well overdue expedition, Scan Pyramids muon scans were put to the test when on the 2nd of March 2023, an endoscopic camera was inserted between the gaps in the stone and the world saw for the first time the Scan Pyramids North Face Corridor. This vindicted the countless hours of hard work over the years that the Scan Pyramids team had carried out, and also cemented their scanning technique as something that is accurate and reliable. For the rest of us, it gave us yet another mystery within the Great Pyramid. What is this corridor, and why does it exist? Let's take a look next at what some of Egyptology's main cast of characters have said about the corridor. Is the corridor a relieving chamber? 
Mustafa Waziri, the current Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, said live on air the day the discovery was announced that it was possible that the North Face Corridor was perhaps some sort of relieving chamber. Waziri even wonders if there could be another tunnel or entrance below the North Face Corridor, but above the current descending passage entrance. This corridor, it's uh, protecting or reducing the pressure on something beneath it. It might be chamber, it might be something else. Very soon we can figure out what is the main issue of this corridor. However, there has been a lot of pushback at this idea, perhaps because Waziri was maybe not the only person to jump to this conclusion. The North Face Corridor, with its sloped roof similar to that of the Queen's Chamber, or perhaps the space above the King's Chamber, may immediately appear to be designed for that specific functionality. However, as many have since pointed out, there is significant evidence that the North Face Corridor is actually not a relieving chamber. Of course, we don't yet know what it is actually used for, but I think we can safely rule out the relieving chamber theory. However, before I get into the reasons why perhaps the North Face Corridor is not a relieving chamber, it would be worth pointing out that Mustafa Waziri is not the first person to suggest another tunnel above the descending passageway but below the chevron blocks which hide the north face corridor. Gilles Domion and Jean-Patrice Goydin, two people who I must once again apologize to for butchering the pronunciation of their names, published in their 1986 paper on the Cheops Pyramid their prediction of a supposed horizontal entrance beneath the chevron blocks but above the current existing descending passageway entrance. Gilles and Jean Patrice suggest that this horizontal corridor would run all of the way to the Grand Gallery, stating in their writing, quote, The existence of this corridor is also the only rational constructive response to the device above the entrance. End quote. By a device above the entrance, I believe that the duo are referring to the chevron blocks, which of course we now know hides the Scan Pyramid's north face corridor. So is there weight to what Mustafa Waziri is saying? Despite the fascinating images from the French duo's 1986 book that I have flashed on screen, courtesy of Keith Hamilton's wonderful short paper on the new void, which I will link in the video description and also of course nag you to please go and read. Despite this, and of course despite my own imagination running away with me at the prospect of more hidden tunnels, there is some serious evidence against the claim that the North Face Tunnel is a relieving chamber. That doesn't totally negate the second set of tunnels theory, but it does certainly put a bit of a dampener on it, at least in regards to how several people involved in Egyptology over the years have imagined how these tunnels would manifest themselves, but we'll come back to this shortly. For now, the main piece of evidence that this was not a weight-relieving chamber is in the construction of the slanted roof. In other weight-relieving instances used in ancient Egypt, such as in the Queen's Chamber of the same pyramid, the stones that make up the ceiling are offset from each other. Therefore, if any of the ceiling stones fail or crack, then the opposite ceiling stone won't automatically fail. It will be pressing up against yet another ceiling stone and on and on. In the Scan Pyramid's North Face Corridor, this is not the case. We can clearly see from the recent images taken inside that the stones on both sides of the sloped roof match up with each other identically, more or less. Also, there are indentation marks visible on some of the ceiling stones, which indicate perhaps that wooden support beams were once in place many, many moons ago. Another big question in the relieving chamber theory is, why would this even be required, especially in this exact location? Both the existing descending passageway tunnel and any proposed secondary tunnel above this would be so small, most likely conforming to the two cubits wide by two cubits two palms high specification that is used throughout the entire pyramid, completely, might I add, without any weight relieving features deeper within the structure. So why here would there need to be such weight relieving spaces created for these tunnels or tunnel? 
it just doesn't seem to add up. This doesn't stop Zahi Hawass, however, from going even further than Mustafa Waziri in suggesting that the true burial place of Pharaoh Khufu is below the North Face Corridor. If we say that this tunnel is protecting or is holding a stone above something, we cannot say it's a corridor at all. There is no way there is a corridor will be here, because down in 7 meters there is another corridor. Between the 7 meters and, and the tunnel that we found today, there is something important, in my opinion, can tell us for the first time that the burial of Khufu is still existed, and this is what we could discover. And I, I, I'm sure, sure, in a few months from now, we can see if I'm saying it's correct or not. But again, we are in front of a major important discovery. Now, when I wrote my original video on the North Face Corridor, I thought Hawass was suggesting that the North Face Corridor protected the tunnels beneath it, which would lead to the true burial place of Pharaoh Khufu. Instantly, my mind went back to what I knew about Jean-Pierre Houdin's proposed secondary set of funerary tunnels, and I found it very bizarre that Hawass, of all people, would do something akin to some sort of U-turn and support something that Houdin had raised many years prior. But no, the truth of Hawass's words is so much more bizarre. What Zahi Hawass is actually saying is that he believes that the burial chamber of Pharaoh Khufu to be directly below the North Face Corridor. Of course, this is an excitable speech that he made during the announcement of the discovery of the North Face Corridor, but no evidence is offered to support this theory. And outside of any evidence we've already looked at regarding the existence of the tunnel in this place as well. But I cannot escape the preposterous nature of such a statement. Why would the ancient Egyptians, after making all of the painstaking effort to create this absurdly oversized superstructure, complete with tunnels and rooms, all constructed to a degree that still boggles the minds of experts today, from an architectural, mathematical, astronomical, or even spiritual perspective? perspective, why would they do all of this just to lay Khufu to rest at the surface of the pyramid below some very obvious and unique stones? Hawass's statement has puzzled me more than anything else. As I stated before, he could well have just said these things to drum up some sort of frenzy around tourism, but it's a hell of a statement to make, especially from someone who so diligently shoots down the theories of others. But that's enough about Hawass for now, let's move on. Construction Corridors It certainly seems that the North Face Corridor is big enough for the average human to stand erect inside of it. It also seems to be about 2 meters wide, at least. This is unlike any space in the pyramid that we know about. It does kind of look similar to the final chamber above the king's chamber, but this north face corridor has a much more even floor and is much more of a general corridor shape. Keith Hamilton, a fantastic scholar on the pyramids, as I may have already mentioned, has drawn parallels between the Spartan North Face Corridor and the corridor running towards the King's Chamber in the 5th Dynasty Pyramid of Neferikare. Keith suggests that the chevrons were put in place so that the construction could continue on the Neferikare Pyramid above this point, whilst the passages below could also be continued to be worked on. He goes on to suggest that the North Face Corridor could have served a similar function for the Great Pyramid, only instead perhaps giving access to the chambers within the pyramid via a horizontal tunnel and also allowing the work to go on above. We know now if the North Face Corridor does or did continue horizontally, then it would come out at the north end of the Grand Gallery. This would give construction workers a large tunnel in which to access not only the Grand Gallery, but the King's Chamber and Queen's Chamber too. Dragging tools and construction materials down the descending passage and then up the ascending passage would have been difficult and perhaps sometimes even impossible work and it makes sense that a wider construction entrance was present and then perhaps backfilled afterwards. Keith Hamilton also mentions the other important factors such a tunnel would provide, such as clean air ventilation and the ability to easily remove debris as work went on. 
if the North Face Corridor was perhaps a construction corridor that did at one point connect to the Grand Gallery, then we could look back once more to the findings of Gilles Domion and Jean-Patrice Goyden. They pointed out some anomalies in the North Wall of the Grand Gallery, so is this perhaps where the North Face Corridor once terminated? Later on, in fact, in Gilles Dumian's 2004 publication entitled Le Chambre de Chiops, there is an illustration provided that highlights these anomalies. Did a tunnel exist here that has now been backfilled and stoned over? As it stands, the North Face Corridor seems to go back about 9 metres into the pyramid, so much more work is needed in order to ascertain where, if anywhere, the passage led. Just as a final note to the back of this passage, there appears to be some raised stones protruding out of the floor. This is very, very similar to an earlier drawing of what such a corridor behind the chevron blocks might look like. The diagram shown on screen now was by J. Bruchet from all the way back in 1965. It is wondrously similar to the real thing that was discovered only weeks ago at the time of recording. Although the longer you look at J. Bruchet's diagram, there are also many inaccuracies to go along with this, but wow, Bruchet really was on the money here with this tunnel. Concluding Thoughts I wanted to return to the North Face Corridor now that the media frenzy surrounding it had died down, and I had some time to digest some of the thoughts and opinions that I had read over the last few weeks. I am still none the wiser as to what the purpose of this tunnel is, and I offer no bold claims with which to end this video. I will say, as exciting as it is looking back at Jean-Pierre Houdin's computer-generated diagram sets of secondary tunnels, all of which lead to where the North Face Corridor was discovered, I must admit that the prospect of the construction corridor theory giving a direct access to the inner workings of the pyramid is a much more realistic option. I have still not given up hope completely on my love for the secondary tunnel system theory, and I hope that one day Jean-Pierre Houdin may publish his own formed thoughts on the discovery of the North Face Corridor. He has written extensively on the Scan Pyramid's Big Void, updating the paper on such further in 2023, but I am holding out for him to touch or create a whole new paper on the North Face Corridor and how that can feed into his secondary set of tunnels or into his wider construction theories which incorporates his notches and his internal ramps. I think the real question now should be around where do we go when moving forward? It is no secret that Egyptology moves slowly and with both Hawass and Waziri's comments that we explored earlier in this video there is the genuine fear that the investigations may begin by looking into the wrong areas. As I said, I highly doubt that Khufu is buried beneath the chamber blocks. So what do you think should happen next? Should we get another camera inside the North Face Corridor, something with a bit more reach that can really have a good look around? Or do you support that a slightly more destructive exploration may now be warranted, even perhaps to insert a small robot or even a person inside the North Face Corridor? All I know is that it will be very interesting to see what comes next, not only for the North Face Corridor, but for the rest of the Scan Pyramids project's ongoing work. If you're still with me, I just want to quickly thank you for watching and for your support. I am one of the smaller channels covering the Great Pyramids, and your viewership is like gold to me. I greatly appreciate your time and your attention. With that, I will sign off for now. Let me know what you think in the comments comments below and I will catch you in the next video. Take care out there.